I'm, rec I'm recording now once again. Uh, so let's go back and talk about uh, now philosophy. Okay, we talked about uh, last time about, uh, as I told you, about the Greek architecture, about um, yeah, the temples of victory, temple of victory, Parthenon, about Zeus um, at uh, the Olympia, about many paintings as uh, the art of painting that was, you know, uh, unfortunately neglected. But uh, the Greek painters, they were uh, focusing on monuments and gods and hero heroes uh, in monuments. Now, in terms of literature, we said, uh, I'm sure that you know more than me, we have the Greek literature, we have uh, uh, a very famous uh, uh, written uh, lit uh, script that is called uh, Aeschylus and Sophocles and Euripides, a very, very famous uh, and great tragic poets of, the, of that period. And the drama of both Aeschylus and uh, Sophocles, uh, they recall the victory of the Greeks over the Persians. And uh, they record the, the gratitude of gods uh, for, the, for that victory. Um, we also have, uh, you know, the drama were performed uh, in, the opera, in the open air theaters, as we can see here in the monuments that we have in Amman, for example, downtown, and, uh, you know, and in uh, Jarash. The, the Aristophanes uh, also was, um, Aristophanes uh, was uh, famous as the writer of the comedies. So we have a tragedy and comedy. Uh, also, the Greeks of this age are contribute as also they contributed to what we call the the lyric poems, and what we call the um, Pindar. Pindar was uh, the greatest lyric poet uh, at that uh, period, and you know uh, we have also a statue of Pindar that was preserved in Athens, and that was uh, very famous because it's the first woman poet in history. Uh, that belonged to that period, and you know that at that period, uh, women were not treated uh, as uh, same as uh, men. Now, what about uh, the, the writing and the history there? Now, the writing of history originated in Greece. So, uh, what we say in Arabic, tarikh, okay, so the writing of history itself is um, originated in, in Greece. And uh, we have two greatest uh, historians of the world uh, that were known at that time. One of them is called Herodotus. Herodotus, okay. Um, I, um, it's very difficult to pronounce their names unless you know Greek. And another one is called uh, Thucydides. And now um, I may not be uh, pronouncing it the right uh, pronunciation, but this is how it is uh, written in English. They lived in that age. Uh, now Herodotus is called the father of history. So he is very, very well known, Herodotus, okay? And he traveled widely and he wrote um, history after collecting lots of facts during his uh, uh, wonders. Now, um, also he dealt with Greek and Persian war. Um, and also he covered uh, the, 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 the relationships bet between uh, the, the, the many countries, Greek, India, and uh, Egypt. Now, the, uh, the other one, um, who's called uh, Thucydides, he wrote the first scientific history, as is um, introduced in, in scientifically, uh, and uh, how it is, um, you know, um, introduced uh, to the world of history nowadays. Uh, based on a scientific procedure in collection and collecting data. And he had not given, you know, the place of imagination as uh, um, Herodotus uh, used to. Um, and uh, of course, he, he had not given the place of imagination, nor supposition, uh, nor emotions and superstitious superstitions in, um, um, in history as Greek people used to. Now, uh, another uh, great historian uh, was called um, um, Xenophon. Um, uh, he was, uh, and we have monuments for, for him, Xenophon. Okay, Xenophon beginning with an X. Okay. Now, we'll talk now uh, in, in a brief and we'll, we'll, uh, we'll go back uh, into the into details of that uh, when we talk about um, certain um, Greek philosophers especially uh, Plato and Aristotle and uh, Socrates, okay, and Socrates. Now, uh, let's begin with uh, the philosophy of um, Socrates, uh, since he is uh, the, the, 
the father of, of philosophers. He is the great philosopher Socrates. You can see here um, when he was born, and um, he he was born in Athens, in in you know uh, 469 BC, uh, and uh, you know he was one of the intimate friends of Pericles. Um, and we talked about uh, Pericles as a state, uh, city state, and he was, uh, you know, uh, regarded as the wisest man of his time. Okay, now um, very uh, his intense thirst for knowledge make, marked him, uh, marked his character. We can say, okay, he believed in in what is called truth with a capital letter, truth. And he taught people to realize the, the fact that um, the very um, foundation of the society were uh, the uh, two things, uh, truth and virtue. Okay, al-haqiqa wa al-fadila, truth and virtue. He also advised people not to accept anything without verifying uh, its inner truth. So he thought there is an inner truth that, is the uh, that reflects the, the, the reality, let's say. Now, he tried to uh, remove superstitions from the minds of the people through argument. We know because at that time they, they believed in superstitions. So he tried to remove superstitions from their minds. And that was very difficult because they believed in gods and goddesses. So, uh, and myths and mythology. So through, and he, he did that through, you know, arguments in public places. He talked about truth. Uh, he talked about... Um, Virtue, he talked about beauty, al haq al khair al jamal, okay, with respect to you know the ideas of justice and morality, okay, so akhlaq al adale, such ideas were and knowledge and ma'rifa were discussed uh, by Socrates at the first time. And some of the, the topics uh, that uh, which he dealt with uh, among his pupils, uh, two, two pupils uh, that, that were. Uh, uh, reflected upon his mind, Luhunni Plato and Xenophon, uh, who was, uh, as I told you, uh, a great historian also at that time. Now, Socrates did not leave his teachings in writing, and this is very important to know. So, somebody um, wrote about Socrates. So, that is his scholar or his pupil, uh, Plato. Now, what was left uh, was uh, we can we can only only see that what was left was from uh, Socrates himself. Okay, not from Socrates himself. Sorry, it was from Plato. He did not. Socrates did not believe in uh, you know the Athenian uh, Athenian gods, and the same uh, at the same time uh, he spread the idea of uh, uh, one all powerful supreme. Okay, a supreme being. So he believed in a supreme powerful being but but that was not called God to him okay as in the sense that uh, Greeks uh, used to think now by by this he incurred you know um, the, the 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 displeasure of the rulers so they were not happy about that and uh, after the death of Pericles he was accused of corrupting the minds of youth and uh, of Athens can you believe that a great philosopher, very well known in as uh, as a wise uh, person he he was treated as corrupter this is very very difficult corrupter of the 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 youth okay so the whole generation now after um, uh, so he was condemned you can also uh, you, you should know this uh, that he was condemned to death by uh, a, a tribunal <coughs> unfortunately he could have <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, he could have saved his life by withdrawing his words, but he refused. <coughs> he refused to be, you know, simply a worshipper, uh, but to the truth. So he preferred death to uh, sacrificing uh, the, the truth. He was made to die by uh, taking poison. He was enforced to take poison. Th that was a way for um, uh, making, you know, um, uh, that uh, decision, uh, the sentence of death. Okay. Now Plato, who came after him now and who re realized to write all that uh, history about him and his words, he was the greatest um, uh, discipline you know, or disciple of Socrates. 
here, we are talking about Plato. This is very famous, uh, you know, uh, one of the famous uh, photos and painters about him, okay, and his uh, um, teacher or tutor, let's say. Now he was the great, uh, the, he was the great, you know, the greatest uh, discipline, let's say, uh, or, or disciple of uh, Socrates. And he spread the knowledge by establishing a school near Athens. Um, this school was called uh, the Academy. So that was the first time we know the word Academy in, in uh, Greece. Okay. So now the Academy, uh, as uh, you can see, um, by that was known uh, at the time of uh, Plato. He wrote down the political thoughts of Socrates at that time. So all political uh, things and thoughts were were written by Plato about Socrates. And among his his uh, writings uh, uh, appeared many many uh, uh, moments where you can see his teacher Socrates uh, and how he treated truth and uh, reality. Now, in his famous, a uh, very famous um, book written by Plato, which is called The Republic, uh, um, or in Arabic it's called Jumhuriyet Aflaton, okay, The Republic, he was given the, the description of an ideal state, okay? In that, he has given, you know, Jumhuriyet Aflaton, the ideal state, which is Jumhuriyet Al-Fadila, very, very idealistic, Mithaliya. Okay, it was uh, his his view that a ruler, even if a tyrant, as was at that time, should work for the welfare of the subjects. Subjects, yani uh, fiha, the citizens. Subjects that are citizens, and he should appoint a philosopher or philosophers at his minister to take advice from him. So he 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 believed in in um, the power of uh, great philosophers that they should be counseling the, the rulers. At le if not they, they rule, they should be counseling the rulers and they should take their advices. Now, Plato, Plato's great um, disciple was Aristotle, who came after him, so it was Aristotle. And, and another famous, let's say, uh, Aristotle, okay, another famous Greek philosopher, who immensely contributed to the uh, different branches of knowledge. Now, before before talking about Plato and Aristotle and you know um, their um, history and uh, you know the, also Alexander the, the, the Great, let me talk about um, um, some uh, a, a great, uh, a very famous word which is sophists. As um, as so al what we call them as sophistaiin, sophists. Sophists, which is in the age, in the age of Pericles, it was marked as uh, the rise of a group of um, professional teachers who are called sophists. Now, um, they, they moved from uh, place to place. They taught the people something new and something beyond the existing of, uh, you know, uh, of, uh, of stock knowledge. They express their doubts in Arabic. Okay, um, so um, they they express their their riwaqiyya um, in Arabic. It's called a riwaqiyya. Okay, in English it is sophism. So they express their uh, their doubts in everything, and they were not uh, prepared to accept anything without argument. So it's um, in, in, we say al jadal al which is based on doubt in everything. But after argument, they will accept the truth. So they 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 fought against superstitions also, and they were um, you know uh, they were great orators, and they they pro also they they used to have many prose and writers in of Greek uh, in Greece, and they also taught uh, arithmetic and geometry and Arist uh, you know astronomy to the people. So it's uh, not only philosophy as pure philosophy that we think nowadays, it was all all kinds or, or branches of uh, science also. So uh, when they talk about uh, um, arithmetics and geometry, arithmetics is, is uh, um, you know, uh, very related to logic. 
and geometry also related to astronomy and so on. So all their beliefs are related in a way to different uh, branches of uh, science. Now, some of them, they deny the existence of God, God with a capital G, uh, and that was, you know, what they could not, um, you know, become popular in Greek uh, society because uh, they, they refused the idea of, of gods and goddesses also. They, um, they were intensely um, religious, uh, the Greeks, but in, in a different way. Now, uh, sophist, sophists contributed to the, the development of uh, what, we, what is called higher thoughts of Greece. Okay? And, and then came uh, science. There was, uh, you know, uh, some progress in, in the field of uh, science at that time, later, um, when, uh, during the age of Pericles also. They contributed largely to arithmetic and geometry and astronomy and medicine also. And uh, we have um, Hipporite. Hipporite, well, he wrote many books in medicine. Um, in in uh, Hippocrat in Arab in Arabic they say it Hipporite. And due to the to that development in the age of Pericles, um, we have uh, what is called or what was described as the golden age where you can see uh, science, medicine, geometry, uh, um, you know, arithmetics, uh, medicine, and philosophy. This is very, very, you know, famous about them. And they helped in the growth of uh, human civilization, as I told you. Now, um, at, um, at that time, also, we have, uh, when we have, po uh, you know, war, we have decline of uh, city-states. And uh, there was struggle, as I told you, because of uh, the Persians. And um, unfortunately, the Persians have many, many bad effects uh, till, till nowadays on, on many um, civilizations that we can see. The Persians and the Turks, uh, Ottomans, unfortunately. After the struggle, they, uh, of course, with the, the nobles and the citizens of the state, now they have uh, lots of, uh, say, defeat. Uh, especially when we talk about um, Alexander the Great and, um, you know, um, what happened during that time. Um, but, but going back to the Republic and Plato, uh, we can see that uh, the introduction of, um, you know, the, the, the funeral oration of Pericles, uh, they suggested uh, at that time, um, as by many modern standards uh, at Athens, uh, that was not uh, accepted as uh, very democratic as we have it nowadays. Now, the service to the state, the empire, um, also is considered as slavery here. So it's not democratic uh, in, in all the, the meanings that we understand nowadays. There is slavery. The, it's not direct. It's, in di uh, it's not indirect, sorry. It is direct. So it's not the same, um, let's say, uh, democracy that we... Uh, understand nowadays. Now, slavery was known in its limitations and, you know, uh, ancient uh, Athenians at that time, they thought of, you know, Athens as appearing to be too democratic. They, they were worried about democracy um, and the meaning uh, of the ruling uh, and, uh, you know, who is capable to rule the, the, the mob this is, that was very uh, important as a question raised. Plato also was one of the these con, you know conservatives or conservative critics, let's say, um, uh, who was you know his his famous work was as I said the Republic, which is an extended argument um, uh, about um, uh, one of the main topics in philosophy, which is justice, justice as uh, you know the best, uh, you know, maybe value to, to rule and, uh, and uh, uh, expand. Also, um, I want to um, now um, end this with uh, a little glimpse of, um, you know, uh, some of the uh, major uh, um, leaders, who is Alexander the Great, Al-Skandar al-Kabir, uh, maybe you heard this name in, in Arabic, Alexander the Great, he was, uh, you know, uh, regarded as one of the greatest conquerors in um, the world's history. And he was born in a small kingdom called uh, Macedonian, or Macedon, okay, Macedon in, in Greece. And uh, that was affected by the Greek civilization also. 
Unfortunately, it was uncivilized, uncivilized uh, because of the barbarous uh, Spartans, uh, how they affected actually the uh, Macedonians. And um, uh, of course, the, in the early in the early uh, life of Alexander in his childhood, uh, Alexander's mother Olympias, uh, you know, narrated to him the stories of military exploits uh, of uh, the famous uh, Greek heroes. Uh, especially um, uh, what uh, what was uh, written uh, by uh, Achilles and by uh, from Iliad to Homer or Iliad of Homer. Now, uh, very famous um, uh, books that we can uh, read nowadays. Trans many trans uh, translations uh, into many many um, languages. Now, um, in Arabic, Iliada wal Odessa. Okay. Now, his father made all possible arrangements for his uh, military training. Um, now we have a very famous also name, which is King Philip. He made uh, this small kingdom powerful at that time. Uh, after that, and um, you know, Philip also appointed um, um, the the famous Greek philosopher Aristotle as his tutor. So it was uh, leaders or or. Um, or let's say um, states leaders, but who who believed in in philosophy and the role of philosophers, that it sh they should consult them. Now um, his associ association with Aristotle uh, widened his mental horizon, of course, and um, thereby he de he developed um, a keen interest uh, in science and both in science and philosophy. Uh, of course, um, he received his high his education after a Greek model. And um, he also tried to spread uh, the Greek culture outside Greece. And that was very good because we, uh, other nations, uh, took uh, advantage of that. As we can see nowadays, till the, for example, uh, um, uh, uh, the Arab people um, at the Islamic uh, era where they translated all uh, the writings of um, philosophy, philosophers at that time. And um, um, actually, the the Islamic philosophy philosophers they used to interpret and um, um, trans translate and take uh, advantage of uh, that uh, Greek philosophy. Now, and of course, to customize it as it is in the in the Arab and uh, Islamic uh, context. Now, on the other hand, you know, Alexander Alexander the Great uh, was extremely egoistic. Okay, and arrogant as all leaders <laughs> usually. He was also cruel, okay, as Spartans. But uh, you know, he proved to be a very great uh, warrior. And at that age, uh, that was of 18, at his age, he was only 18. He was associated with his father in the battle of uh, what is called um, uh, Caronia. And um, together with, you know, the situation of King Philip that made uh, Macedon uh, the military powerful uh, uh, state or, or city state. Now, uh, after that, uh, we can uh, you can have uh, have a look on the, you know, a very uh, what is called shield shield, uh, very large shield that was headed by uh, soldiers at that uh, era and battles. Um, were uh, destroying uh, all all ways of you know diplomacy. So now after that, when when King Philip came, he first applied uh, diplomacy. So diplomacy was known at his time before it is known in European uh, context uh, in France and Europe. And he also conquered uh, territories uh, between uh, you know Macedon and uh, the River Danube. So that was the area that he in, in uh, also the invasion was uh, till also till till the east. The, all that um, part was with Alexander the Great, and so the supremacy over let's say Greek uh, city states. He was known for that, and uh, you know for his conquests. Uh, you know uh, Alexander uh, Alexander the Great conquests with his army. Very famous. Uh, you know, the um, city was known, that is the city of Troy, uh, Turwada, okay, they call it uh, Turwada, and the Greek hero, um, um, Aeschylus, okay, he's called Aeschylus. Now, Alexander uh, entered into Asia, also Asia Minor, it's called, 
الاسيا الدنيا مش الوسطى يعني الصغرى الصغرى let's say and at that time uh, you know persians also uh, the persian empire uh, weakened the greek empire unfortunately and they occupied the phoenician and phoenician all phoenician ports okay and they entered into egypt uh, from gaza now um, maybe you know that he's called alexander and alexandria is called because named after his uh, his name okay alexandria al iskandaria in egypt is named after him after his name and he founded a town named alexandria uh, on which is on the mouth of the nile and sent uh, some experts to study uh, the cause of flood in the nile so that was um, um, you know uh, he was very and he concerned with nature at, at that time now um, uh, many battles as i said uh, were there at that time and uh, till you know the estimate uh, that of alexander uh, was uh, when he had uh, you know given the place of the world conqueror in the history he you know napoleon uh, bonaparte uh, he was uh, he has been compared with another conqueror very great conqueror in history which is napoleon uh, uh, bonaparte and they both of them uh, were were great uh, generals and both of them were ambitious and both of them aimed at uh, the world um, you know uh, to 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 have dominion over the world and uh, both of them they achieved military glory of course and you know the only difference is that uh, whereas um, uh, napoleon um, made attempt to uh, consolidate his empire uh, he failed uh, you know uh, he, uh, alexander did not did not have the time to do that okay and that was the the only uh, problem with him so uh, you know the greatness of alexander lies in the attempt to bring uh, you know fusion of uh, the greek and the eastern cultures so the greek were um, yeah, you know the fusion of the greek with the eastern culture that was because of alexander alexander the great thanks to him now also uh, the trade um, the trade and the campaigns um, the contact, uh, they, they know, the ultimately resulted in the exchange ideas between East and West. That is very important. We'll talk about it later, East and West. And we have very, one of the famous uh, people we'll talk about is Edward Said, one of famous uh, philosophers in Arabic literature and Arabic uh, philosophies. Um, now, um, of course, the exchange between East and West, and, you know, uh, very little uh, was, uh, you know, given about or considered about uh, his weakness uh, of some some of the characteristics of uh, that he had uh, in his uh, you know personality but uh, we we also um, concentrate on that a great military genius um, ingenuity that he has over uh, to be treated as a very valuable service to the man, to uh, mankind now by this um, I, I i gave you a glimpse of um, you know, um, a general idea about philosophy uh, at the Greek time. Of course, uh, you have to, to read here uh, a little bit about Socrates uh, as a philosopher, um, wh um, what are his main works, and we'll go back to that, of course. Uh, for example, um, you know, uh, some what is called the primary sources of, of his uh, right, his uh, ideas. Uh, what what he did he say about uh, for example the Socratic uh, problem um, and um, of course the great primary sources as I said I, I mentioned Plato but before that we have the Aristophanes uh, uh, in, in in Arabic they call it uh, Aristophan okay and Xenophon okay and now we about also we have contemporary in, um, interpreters uh, about his strategies and implications of that uh, philosophy of Socrates. Now, you know, chronology of uh, the history of all, all philosophies of Socrates, Aristotle, and Plato dialogues. Hiwar Socrat, Hiwar Socrati, or Hiwar al is very uh, famous in, in, uh, in philosophy. And of course, uh, we have uh, very many interpretations, as you can see when, when you read this. So. Uh, you can uh, have a look, please, on uh, this uh, material. 
where you can see the Socrates problem uh, in, in details and uh, the primary sources and how he thought about the primary sources of uh, nature and, and life itself, okay? Also, um, we have here, uh, of course, he talked about many doctrines. Also, you go back to Plato and Aristotle and how they differ as a, a tutor and, you know, a teacher and uh, his uh, scholar, let's say. Um, of course, but they belong to the school of Athens, uh, and uh, we have many other uh, painters that uh, talked about uh, their philosophy, such as Raphael, um, where you can see this painting, for example, describing what happened at that time. Okay, uh, so please go back to this and have a look on it. Um, I, I think um, uh, we can see uh, the discussion about uh, justice, about uh, tyranny, about uh, different uh, ways of, uh, uh, let's say, uh, systems, uh, political systems, like uh, minority groups, the rule of minority groups, um, what is meant by aristocracy, what is meant by ol uh, oligarchy, and uh, different, uh, and demon uh, democracy, and so on. So it's it's good to have a look at, this, at that. Uh, that will save us a lot of time uh, when we talk about it uh, next time in our uh, discussions. Now here I'll I'll stop um, the the recording and listen to your.